Hi there, I'm Wendy from Stoneflow Designs. In this video, I'm going to run you through the Humble Ocean Resin Coaster. It is loved by one and all, and it is most certainly a beginner level piece for anyone that's new to resin. So I have a one here. This is a little set that I made up for a colleague at work, uh, just wrapped in plastic with a bow. So I'll just unwrap it. There we go. We've got the coasters, four wooden coasters. Uh, the wooden coaster bit is called uh, coaster blanks. You can get them from many different places. Uh, I, I got these off of Amazon. Um, very basic, not expensive at all. Um, I used three basic colors. So you've got your deep dark blue, which is the back of the coaster. Then you've got your turquoise, which I used a, a teal uh, as well as some mica powder just to add some um, sparkle to it. Um, and your blue, this one's called tidal blue. Uh, that's for the edge. And then of course you've got your white for the wave. Super simple. Uh, at the end, uh, after it was dry, I also used a bit of food safe wax just to cover the wood to protect it from any droplets. Uh, the back, I used a liquid latex, but you can definitely use masking tape. I just prefer to use liquid latex because it helps get into the seams of the wood. But honestly, masking tape is perfectly fine because I'm sure as a beginner resiner, you probably don't have liquid latex in your cupboard, but I will put a link to it in, in the description if you want to purchase some. It is a really, really handy thing when it comes to resin. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It was, it's one coat. It's very simple. You don't want it to be a thick piece of resin because when you're putting a cup on it, you don't want the resin to be denting at all. And you want to pretty much cover most of the, the coaster because you don't want it to have a lip on the coaster and, and the cup to be, you know, teetering on the top of the coaster kind of defeats the purpose. Very simple. I did these all up together in one night. The very next day, I was able to clean up the backs, put the wax on, wrap them in some cellophane, put a bow on them and um, give them away to some colleagues of mine for a special Christmas gifts. So it's about six or seven days left till Christmas. So don't know if you're going to have enough time to do it, but um, definitely something to keep in your pocket for next year or a good starting point if you're interested in getting into resin. Right, without further ado, I'll get stuck into the video. I hope you enjoy it. Please do like and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying my videos. Thanks again, I'm Wendy from Stoneflow Designs. All right, I'm just deciding which side I want to use uh, for the ocean. So I've got some liquid latex here I'm going to paint that on the back sides of the coasters. So the side that you can see here is going to be the bottom of the coasters. Just deciding on each side based on, you know, the, the kind of marks that um, natural wood has. Uh, so I'm just painting the uh, liquid latex on around the base. Really just needs to go around the edge because all that's going to happen is there's going to be some drips that go just around the edge of the coaster. I understand you probably won't have liquid latex. That's absolutely fine. Just use some masking tape. That works fine too. The only downside with masking tape is sometimes you need to sand it a little bit if the resin seeped under. So now I'm just putting some colors into some little cups. I am using a deep dark blue for the back of the coaster, which um, indicates the deep ocean. And then in the center of the line, some turquoise teal with a bit of mica powder and then some uh, light blue, also quite a sparkly blue. Tends to look quite nice on the ocean if you use the dark blue as a solid color, solid pigment, and the other um, colors a little bit of uh, sparkle or mica powder in them. It, uh, it works quite nicely. So I'm just making sure that they're all really mixed up very well. This is the white as well. 
and just turning over the coasters now. The liquid latex is mostly dry, which is absolutely fine. If it is, if there is any tackiness, it'll actually help the coasters stick to the cups. So that's fine. And now I'm just pouring on the blue. So I, I'm not putting too much on and, and that's on purpose because it is actually a thin layer of resin and you do want to allow it to move a little bit. So to start, I'm just putting a very thin strip of the dark blue uh, and then I'll move through the colors as I go. Now this resin that I'm using is called Art Resin. It is uh, a resin that has no VOCs. Um, it, it's certainly not the cheapest resin out there. It's, uh, it's a little bit pricey, but it is worth it. Absolutely worth the price, uh, really, just for the fact that it has no VOCs. Um, if you're brand new to resin, I uh, would recommend that you do a bit of research on the different types of resin. I, I know that when I started out, I certainly was <laughs> heading towards the cheaper options uh, and really kind of regretted that when I felt like I was running a science experiment in my kitchen with a bit of mm, fumes coming from a cup that made me feel really quite unwell. So. Since that moment, I uh, definitely did my homework and have ever since just used art resin. I find that it is definitely, in my opinion, the safest and the best to use. So art resin has a working time of about 45 minutes. So what that means is the resin is going to continue to move and be quite workable for that time period. After 45 minutes, it's not going to be dry by any stretch, but it's just going to be to the point where it's it's actually starting to harden. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to work with. The thing to consider when you're doing an ocean is you, you want to wait until that end of that 40 to 45 minutes before you actually do the final wave. And the reason for that is because you don't you you want to make sure that the, the resin has actually settled. And if you take a look at the coaster that I'm putting resin on right now, there's a little knot that you can see there. It's like almost in the center of that the coaster above the one that I'm working on now. Um, and if you keep an eye on that knot, you'll see how later on in the video, once I get to the point of doing the white, the resin has actually moved almost all the way up to that spot and it it just continues to move so if you wait till about 40 minutes for a resin like art resin that has a 45 minute working time that's the point where you're going to want to lay down the clear and then do your um wait about 10 minutes and then do your white and that way you, you get a much better wave. It doesn't move around too much and you don't want the resin to move because it ruins the beautiful cells and the lacing that is actually what mimics the wave. All right, so I've done the dark blue, I've done the teal in the center, and now I'm just gonna add the, um, the lighter blue on the edge and after I've added the lighter blue, I'll do a little bit of mixing around on the, the coasters just to try and blend it a little bit. That's all. All you want to do is just a tiny little bit of blending. You don't want to lose those, um, uh, the, the indication of the different colors. You, you want that to be quite apparent in the end.
All right, now I'm just going to blend it a little bit. Um, this part, I think, is probably the most nerve-wracking part of doing the oceans like this because when you do blend it a little bit with your fingertips, it really doesn't look very good. And, and it's tempting to keep blending because, well, it, it doesn't look like a natural ocean the way that it is. But if you just trust the process, um, it, it will, uh, because this is just enough to blend it just a little bit. But of course, as I said earlier, the resin's gonna continue to move and that blending will continue to happen on its own. But also, once you put down the clear and you're doing the white, you're using a heat gun to blow the white over the entire resin piece and that ultimately moves the resin as well. So there's a lot more blending that's going to take place between now and the end of 40 minutes. So um, yes, my recommendation to you is don't stress. It, I, it, I know that it actually doesn't look great at the moment, but it will. Um, it's just a matter of blending it just a little bit. And as you can see here, I'm just using my fingertip. You could use um, you could use the blade of a little plastic knife if you wanted to, but you're really going quite gently and you're only touching the, the very top of the resin so that you're not digging too deeply down into the, the base of the resin. So you, you really don't want to stir it. You don't want to mix it too much. I'm also just using my fingertip to um, add the resin just around the edge because like I said earlier you do want the edge where the ocean is the edge of the coaster to be covered in resin um, but the other edge where the wave will be you, you don't want that to have resin on it so um, as you can see I'm just dabbing it over the edge All right, I'll just speed things up a little bit so you're not bored to tears watching this. Just um, kind of finish putting the resin around the edge and blending it a little bit. Now it's time to add the clear. At this stage, I have waited about 40 minutes uh, before adding the clear. So the blue and teal resin has had time to settle and move into place. As you can see, I mentioned earlier that coaster on the far left, uh, closest to the bottom, has a bit of a knot almost in the center. When I mentioned it earlier, the resin was a lot further away from that knot than it is now. So the resin just, just self levels. It will continue to move on its own. So I'm just um, adding a line of clear uh, that is basically placed right next to the other blue. Um, it's okay if, there, if there's a little tiny gap between the clear and the blue. Um, because again, the resin will move and it will touch the blue as it starts to move. So most importantly, you're, you're really not, you're trying not to pour the clear into the blue. You want it to be next to the blue. So allowing a little bit of gap is actually good practice because as you can see here, I'm using a popsicle stick to move it a little bit um, and also just to create a little bit of definition in the the clear. Um, you know, sometimes you see an ocean wave on the beach, and it has a little bit of jaggedness to it. It's um, you know certainly they don't all look the same. So I'm just trying to create a little bit of texture in the the um, the clear resin, um, which helps with the wave. So I'm gonna about to put the white on now. The white is actually going just on the edge of the clear. Now, the rule is with the white, you actually want to pour it on the edge, but into the clear, as opposed to the clear and the blue. The clear you want to pour 
uh, away from the blue and you know almost leaving the tiniest little hairline gap between the clear and the blue the white you actually want to pour into the clear but you want to get it just on the edge of the clear there's a lot of rules when it comes to the um, ocean resin piece but um, take your time with the white it is a little bit of a finicky thing and it can be a little nerve-wracking but it doesn't need to be nerve-wracking it's just just um, you want to just use a very very small amount on your popsicle stick and like I'm doing here try and go from either side so a little bit from one side into the middle and then move your popsicle stick over to the other side of the coaster and try and go the opposite way Sometimes I find that that works quite well. Um, sometimes I just try and go all the way with the clear. Um, but you, you do have to take it a bit slow. So just take your time with it. There's absolutely no need to rush. Uh, and the other important note is that you, you really don't want a lot of white on the, um, on the coaster. Uh, a little white goes a long way when it comes to creating a wave. Now another thing that I will quickly point out for those of you that are new to resin, before you start anything, make sure that the table that you're working on is perfectly level. Absolute worst thing and total rookie move, which honestly I still do sometimes, is not checking to see that it's level in the first instance and the resin will continue to move possibly in the wrong direction. So just make sure your work surface is level. All right, it's time to blow out the waves. I'm just using the heat gun on low to heat up the resin, the white once it starts to move a little bit, I turn the fan on high and blow the wave across the coaster. Now, um, turning the fan on high moves all the resin. So sometimes I just tilt it back up a little bit just to move it back into place. As you can see here, again, just heating up the resin and then on high, um, moving it up and down ever so slightly just to create a little bit of those um, wave lines I guess in in the resin in the white again here's another one just heating it up just a little bit just to get it to move and then on high up and down the slightest movement uh, and the the heat the fan or the air is just running across the entire piece. So you're just almost like skimming a rock. You're trying to skim the surface of the resin with the white. And now I'm just running over it with the torch, which, uh, as I said before, always does try uh, create, it, it creates the cells. All right, just heating up the resin a little bit and then blowing it across. As you can see in this one, you can see how the colors are blending a little bit more too. So, um, uh, you know, it does, it does sort of resemble an ocean in the end.
Now this one, I decided it needed a little bit more white on the edge. I thought I'd just add a little bit to the edge and well, it would be fine, but of course, uh, I didn't like what it looked like uh, um, because I just feel like when you add the white after the waves have already been blown out, it doesn't blend properly. So I grabbed the heat gun and I blew it out again. And this is a really good example of what happens when you try and blow out a wave twice. It's not horrible, but the size of the cells, the cells completely change. So you lose all that lacing that you had in the first time. And now you can see it, it almost looks like it's, it's blending. It's, it's not creating the cells that you want. It does eventually create some cells, but the cells are much smaller. So the lacing is, is really quite fine as opposed to the larger ones like the other pieces. And um, it's, yeah, I don't really like it quite as much. It's best to not try and mess with it, is my advice. So here I am, um, it's the next day. The resin is dry. I'm just now trying to get the drips off the bottom, which is very simple. Just a little bit of heat gun, like you saw there. I just passed over the edge of probably about three times. And now I'm using a paint stripper and just scraping along the edge. Bearing in mind, I do have um, liquid latex on the bottom, so it's quite easy to um, scrape across that edge with the paint stripper. I've got the coaster just sitting on a little um, piece of silicon uh, just to protect it from any scratches. I, you don't want to turn it over and put it down on a table that's covered in bits of resin because you'll scratch the resin and you don't want to do that. So I'm just peeling away the liquid latex, which is just a wonderful thing. Uh, it definitely protects the bottom really well. It's um, it's very, very handy thing to have. I will put a uh, link to the one that I use in the comments. If you are doing resin uh, on a regular basis, it is certainly worth your while to invest in some liquid latex. I would highly recommend it. On to the next, just a little bit of heat and the resin comes right off. This would be the same if you had tape on the bottom and um, the resin had dripped onto the tape. You would just heat up the resin and the tape like I just did and peel off the tape. Uh, the tape and the resin would break away really easily once it's warm. So um, the heat gun and is definitely your friend when you're working with resin, that's for sure. Okay, here's my beautiful coasters. I've got some food safe wax. I'm just going to rub it on the back of the coasters and um, the very edge of the wood that's showing just beyond the wave on some of them. There's still a little bit of wood there. I'll just rub a little bit of food safe wax um, and then polish it off just to, it really just, 
protects the wood a little bit from any potential drips and it also smells really nice. Now I've got wax on the fronts of the coasters through the process of the waxing. So now I've just got some isopropyl alcohol uh, and I will just polish the resin and remove any wax residue that's left behind from when I was adding the wax. The wax is all now dry, but um, just shining them up back to their beautiful resin sparkly shine. Um, and they are complete. All right, this is the end part. I'm just wrapping them up into some cellophane and putting a bow around them. Uh, that's probably, I guess, the most satisfying part, isn't it? Just picking a few different variations of coasters, some with the, the waves a little bit higher on the coaster and others with the waves almost to the edge, just to, for some variety, putting four in a pack wrapping it up in cellophane, putting a little bow around it. Uh, and like I said earlier, just giving them out to a few colleagues at work. It was just a nice little token gift made with love. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. It is such a simple concept and a really, really wonderful technique to master the the basic ocean can be done on so many different things. But just to start with, start with a coaster. It's, it's just such a great place to start if you're beginning in resin. Uh, it can be a bit daunting at first. Trust me, it will get easier. So please persist. If you have any questions, let me know. Ask a, a question in the comments. I'm more than happy to help and answer any questions you may have. And if you're liking the channel uh, and liking the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It certainly helps. Thanks again. I'm Wendy from Stoneflow Designs.